Wait, I'm talking. Okay, so we are inside the Ream Caliphone AV80 cassette player. So this is the inside. Um, I mean, it's going to be shaky cam, unfortunately, again, I feel like. But let me get you all a better view. So this is the where the power comes in for the 120 volts. That goes immediately right up here behind this circuit board to a transformer right here. That turns it down to six volts, which feeds the rest of the machine, including this motor here, the circuit board, and all that good stuff. So yeah, we have our main drive motor here, our take up reel here, and I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe our capstan is right here. So, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, I've never really worked on a uh, cassette player or recorder before. And I'm just trying to figure out the best way to repair Re, uh, restore this thing without uh, breaking anything else or uh, making it worse but yeah then down here we have our if you can see it we have our audio inputs and outputs as well as, well as the remote uh, and then yeah down here we have our switch and potentiometer then up there we have the massive uh, loudspeaker on this thing, which actually does get pretty loud, and even though it's 50 years old, still sounds pretty good. I have tried, and I'll show that here, I have tried to remove the circuit board here. There's just three screws that hold it in place. Uh, there's a screw here. which has a little grommet type thing on it. And then we have two up here. So I've removed these screws before and tried to get this uh, board out but didn't really have much luck now watch uh, with it being on camera it'll probably come right on up and out no it's still it still seems like there's something holding it down oh carefully Oh, there we go. So. So, yeah, there's the circuit board for this thing. Uh, there, I have found the schematic for this uh, machine. Uh, the only thing I've been able to find is the schematic and a uh, parts diagram. Um, this thing only has, I want to say, eight transistors in the whole thing. There's one right there, one there. Uh, but anyways, below the circuit board, that's the mechanism. So let me take a look at the mechanism, see what's going on inside, and then I'll try to put this thing back together. So that's play. Which is the one that works. Uh, 
Ah, this ain't moving. It's wanting. So, in play, the take up on this one are running as well as the tape counter. I believe this is, yeah, this is the tape counter down in here. I think this could be the capstan. And then this is probably the take up reel. But this is play, so it's working. Fast forward. I think again, that could be rewind. So that one spun a little bit. And then on this one, it ain't even running. Well, now that's spinning. A little bit but not nearly as well as it does in play so yeah I'm gonna put this back together and test a uh, test to see if that actually fixed it right hand corner of this window with this box, you control so the size of the handle. By holding I down the mouse button and dragging the box, you can actually reduce or expand any controller. handle. This uncovers the folder window. Right hand corner of this folder window. You now can activate it by clicking where it is visible. Change the size of that one, too. When you have more than one window open, you know which one is the active one by looking at the title bar. The title bar of the active window is highlighted. By letting you have overlapping windows, your Macintosh makes the best use of your electronic desktop and can show the contents of several objects at once. You can also move these windows around. Point anywhere in the title bar of the active window, press and drag, mm. and you can move the window where you want it to be. Activate the other window next I had and another move that tape one too by here. pointing in the title bar and dragging. I had another tape that was working. Okay, so I've opened the player up again. And I'm going to press play. Point to the arrow at the top and click, and you can move the window up. There's a box in the scroll bar which moves up or down depending on the direction of the scroll. This is called the scroll box. You can also scroll by pointing in the gray area of the scroll bar and clicking. This moves you up or down faster than the individual clicks on the arrows. Okay. Let me look. Here is fast forward. Nothing. Hey, I don't see anything coming from the motor. And then rewind. Again, nothing. An even faster way to scroll Play. is to point to the scroll box itself and drag it up or down. Fast forward. Let me make sure. Yeah, fast forward. Fast forward, the motor is running. But the belt doesn't appear to be moving. Rewind, the motor is running, but nothing is happening either. Huh. But play works. Um, so yeah, whenever I was doing the um, pinch roller test, 
and I just use this little pin cap to kind of push it down, uh, I had a funny smell and smelled kind of like something was getting hot. And then I think uh, I saw a little bit of smoke. So I quit that test, pulled the cover, and uh, made sure she's still running. Uh, the play still works, as you all heard and saw. Uh, so I don't know what is going on. The other tape I had, uh, whenever I did the pinch roller test, it was doing exactly like someone had mentioned, where it would vary in speed because there is no, uh, it wouldn't be able to really regulate speed as well. Uh, but whenever I tried it with that Macintosh tape, uh, yeah, it didn't really work out too well and concerned me. So. Yeah, let me put this all back together again for the 15th time today.